Welcome back, geometry students. We got 2.5 reasoning going on today. This is really the introduction to proofs. Proofs are kind of like the Achilles heel of most students. They really don't like them, but it really lays a great foundation for not only mathematics, but science also, and just a good way of thinking. So we're gonna to try to break it down as easy as possible. Now, what we have here is we have properties of equality and we have po uh, properties of congruence. These are kind of like your moves. This is your, your skill set. This is what you use to uh, go from one point to another. But there's steps along the way, so each one of these would count as a step. And you'll know what I mean uh, a little bit more in just a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead, let's choose purple for this one. Addition property. So these are things that you have done all the time. You just maybe not have known the name of the, of the move, as I like to call it, but the property. Um, so let's just go ahead and give some examples. So if A equals B, then A plus blank equals B plus blank. And we can say, a plus C equals B plus C. Now what we did there is something that is fundamental to solving equations. You can add something to both sides of the equal sign and it does not change the value. Something that you're very familiar with when you're solving something like 2X minus three equals four, you would add three to both sides and that is okay. That's an okay move to do because it is a property of equality. It, it keeps it balanced, the equation balanced, because you do the same thing to both sides. Moving on, subtraction property. We're gonna kind of uh, cruise through this because this is something that's pretty uh, self-apparent. Uh, we have A minus C this time because it's just the opposite. So we can subtract something from both sides and make it equal. Multiplication property, hopefully you guys are getting the pattern. If A equals B, then A times equals B times. Now, what I would do here if I were watching this video for the first time is I would just skip ahead um, and I would go to the end and just copy down and pause it because uh, the commentary is pretty, pretty basic. Um, because there's not much to say because you guys have used these rules so much, but just in case you haven't, I'm gonna keep talking. So here we have division. I'm representing it as a fraction as you are allowed to do. And there's just one exception, C cannot equal zero because you cannot divide by zero. That would be undefined. Now here we have our first kind of new one. This is called the reflexive property. And this is what A is gonna equal A. That is the reflexive property. As we move on to some examples, um, uh, later on, we're going to see how this is used, but the reflexive property, think of it as a mirror. You know, you got A looking in a mirror and he sees himself in the mirror. Okay. So that's, that's the kind of example I give. You're probably thinking, oh, of course A equals A, but you need to know that because if there's two different A's, like there's an A in this problem over here and there's an A in this problem over here, they're the, they gotta be equal. Okay. Uh, within the same, with the same problem. Symmetric property, very similar, okay? Uh, if we have A equals B in one scenario, whoops, I guess I'll keep using red, then B equals A, okay? If you switch it around, it's still equal. That's what this one's about. This one's like, if you switch it around, it's still equal. Transitive property. Now, this is, we gotta be careful with these next couple ones. Let's change it to, let's change it to blue. So with transitive property, if, a, and I'm gonna write it like this, if A plus C equals B, and B equals uh, D plus C, okay, actually I'm gonna change that a little bit. I'm gonna write it like this, sorry. B equals A plus C, and A plus C equals D, okay? Then, notice how we have an if-then statement, so those previous chapters are kind of coming into fruition here. Then B equals D, and I'll change the color on this one. Okay, whoops. Sometimes my pencil doesn't cooperate. I'll change it to this pink color. Uh, I'm gonna stand out a little bit more. I want it to be the orange. <laughs> Not a big difference. Here we go, green. 
Okay, now what happened here? Well, notice how on this entire side of the equal sign, these are identical, okay? This is the, the, the thing with trans, uh, transitive property. It has to be equal on the whole side, so either the whole left side or the whole right side. And then once that happens, you can bridge the gap here and set those two quantities equal to each other. So B equals D because they both have A plus C that they're equal to. So you can just continue it and say B equals D. All right, substitution is similar but not the same. It's very similar but not the same. So we have, for this one, oops, if, oh, I think I had the wrong color. It's supposed to be this one. If A equals B, Okay, um, then A can replace B in any equation, any expression, sorry. Okay, I'm going to give kind of an example with this one. So if we have A equals B, and then we also have something like B plus Z equals D, then what we can do is we can take our A and replace it. So we can say this A is gonna replace this B and we write A plus C equals D. This is equivalent, okay? Now notice the difference here. We didn't replace an entire side, we just replaced one uh, variable. We just replaced one term within the equation, okay? So a substitution property, this is when you replace one term. So this is one term. And this is an entire side, an entire side of equal sign. Okay, so that's the difference there with transitive and substitution. Real subtle, but it is important. Okay, distributive property, uh, you guys should remember that. That's when we multiply term outside, parentheses, sorry, parentheses to each term inside. Okay, and then I can give a quick example. If we have something like C and then two plus A equals, let's just say five. We can say we distribute this. Let me change the color, actually. Change it to this pink color. Mm, green, change my mind, C. So then we can have C, C, and then we're gonna replace the rest with purple. So we have two, okay, if I can get it, two A plus equals five. You distribute it to both. I like calling it like the rainbow method because you draw these little these little lines that show the distribution. Okay, we're gonna distribute it to both terms. If there was three terms inside, we distribute to all three. Okay, so now we have properties of, congru of congruence. Now, when you see this symbol here, Essentially, this is the equal sign for shapes. It means it has the same dimensions, the same angles, okay? So I like to think of it as the, let me choose a color. This is the equal sign for shapes. And there's other things that can be uh, shapes and angles, I should say. Shapes, angles, uh, segments, lines. So I, uh, let's put and lines in there, and lines. Shapes and angles and lines, oh my. Now, reflexive property, it's similar to what we had before, but now we're using um, a little bit different uh, equal signs. So we're not using the same equal signs. So we can say like angle A is uh, congruent to angle A, okay? That's reflexive. So it's kind of like looking in the mirror, very similar to what we had before. We can use segments too, so we can say A, B, Segment AB, we'll say if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then CD is congruent to AB. Okay, it's it's good both ways around. That's what uh, the symmetric is. It's balanced on both time, both sides, and you can switch it, and it's still good. Now, transitive is really kind of the money maker here. This is the one you use a lot for certain proofs. I'll, I'll emphasize it with the uh, pink color. So if we have something like 
let me use an angle again, I suppose. So if angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to, any guesses? Okay, notice how we have uh, a B here on both sides. Boom, boom, we can bridge the gap between, whoops, I missed. We can bridge the gap and we can say, I'm gonna erase it. We can say angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay, so this is the first part. I wanna give a break just so you guys can get all these definitions down and I'm gonna break down proofs in the second part of this video. So stay tuned, make sure you don't go away, don't change that channel, I'll be right back.